Rapid urbanization of developing countries such as India and China over the past decade have resulted in almost 200,000 people migrating from rural to urban regions somewhere on the planet every day, according to United Nations statistics. This translates into the need for the world to accommodate the equivalent of a new city of 1 million people every week. How can our existing or new urban centers accommodate this growth? Whilst the envisaged new cities have an important role to play in the future, in themselves they are not the solution. The rural to urban migration is centered on existing cities, many of which are struggling with the consequential population explosion and the impact on existing infrastructure and patterns of life. Our host city for the CTBUH World Conference Mumbai is a poignant example of the pressures many cities in developing countries face. A population growth which currently sees the city census at 16 million and growing daily is superimposed on an infrastructure which has seen little development since its initial creation. Every aspect of it seems way beyond capacity. Mass transit power, waste handling, access to clean water, housing and open spaces. But simultaneously, thousand new skyscrapers are proposed and are under construction in the city in recent years without much emphasis on improving infrastructure. Hence, remaking Mumbai is a challenge and the conference was aimed to tackle such situations facing Mumbai and other cities. From February 3rd through the 5th, 2010, the tall building world gathered in this Indian metropolis for the CTBUH conference titled Remaking Sustainable Cities in the Vertical Age. An impressive 1,067 delegates representing 490 companies and 26 countries attended the event at the plush Renaissance Hotel and Convention Center featuring a world-class lineup of 77 speakers from India and overseas. Organized in cooperation with the remaking of Mumbai Federation, the conference aimed to highlight the latest insights in sustainable urban development while introducing international expertise into the urban context of Mumbai. The conference received great support from several local state governments with heads of their city development councils explicitly sharing their views and problems with the international delegates. Looking back, we are proud to be able to say that it was a great success. I am Professor Sangde Kim, Chairman of the Council on Tall Building and Urban Habitat. On behalf of the entire organization, I would like to welcome all of you to the CTBH 2010 Mumbai Conference under the title of Remaking Sustainable Cities in the Vertical Age. We are gathered here this week in our host city, Mumbai, a city which epitomizes the pressures and the struggles that many cities in developing countries face today. Thank you to the remaking of Mumbai Federation for helping to open the doors of your city to planners, designers, architects, engineers, tall building and urban specialists from around the world. In the three-day completely packed conference, issues concerning remaking of already built cities and creation of new eco-friendly cities were extensively discussed. Day two of the conference was devoted to remaking of Mumbai and strategies to rectify the damage already done to Mumbai were debated. Mumbai's decision makers and our speakers like Mr. Ratnakar Gaikwad, Commissioner MMRDA, Mr. Swadhin Kshatriya, Commissioner MCGM, Gautam Chatterjee, CEO and VP Mahada presented in front of the global audience their plans to rebuild our city. 
Remaking of Mumbai Federation presented their idea of cluster development for the inner cities and said that by grouping areas of 30 to 70 acres together we can holistically redevelop the place and even keep the local character intact Anthony Wood executive director of CTBUH presented his plan of redeveloping sea ward Kalba Devi area by building interconnecting skyscrapers prepared by his students at the Illinois Institute of Technology Chicago also the redevelopment project of bhendi bazar area by saifi bhurani upliftment trust was hugely appreciated and it showed that community engagement in redevelopment is crucial in transforming built cities international city plans were an eye opener to many indian architects and planners and it made them realize that environment should be given top priority while designing cities planners of mazdar abu dhabi dongton china Songdo Korea shared their vision and provided some food for thought for local designers and government officials. There were several technical presentations relating to building facades, elevators for tall buildings and advances in structural engineering by Ahmed Abdul Razak, Samsung Engineering and Construction, Construction Planning of the Burj Dubai. Dr. Joseph Kolako, Principal CBM Engineers Inc., Professor University of Houston, Houston, USA, Clive Robinson, Product Manager, Tekla, Finland, Stephen Renke, Principal Stephen Renke Architects and many more. Alan Robert, International Spider-Man, known for illegally climbing skyscrapers across the globe, also made his presence felt at the conference and was in fact the star attraction. He has climbed the Petronas Star Malaysia, the Sears Star Chicago, the Taipei 101 Taiwan and has promised to do a similar act in Mumbai once we scale new heights. For most delegates it was a first trip to India and the technical tours gave everyone a chance to step outside and get a feel of the bustling city of Mumbai. The trip to Palais Royal at Worli in South Mumbai was the most awaited one. as it currently is the city's tallest residential tower under construction at a height of 300 meters the luxury tower will contain 145 apartments in between 8700 square feet and 14000 square feet in size with an octagonal shaped floor plate of 50000 square feet the tower will house amenities like a cinema spa cricket pitch soccer field and three swimming pools with parking levels in the lower section of the tower each of the 12 villas which are the apartments of 14000 square feet will have an in-house swimming pool every apartment will also have its own elevator the building will have 65 floors which is a low number given the height of the building the tower presents itself as the first lead platinum rated skyscraper of mumbai The other technical tour was to the Sea Ward, one of Mumbai's high density zones and one of the largest and oldest trade markets in the city. Different streets specialized in different trades with an informal land use zoning pattern clearly observed. Residential use filled up the floors above the commercial space. Thus even though basic amenities and services are provided by the municipal government and other organizations it was clear to delegates that there are not enough to facilitate this overcrowded district traveling on foot through the streets of the sea ward was the best way to experience this city within a city the technical tour of the squatter settlement dharavi captured the imagination of many of the conference delegates Known as India's largest slum, Dharavi lies in the center of Mumbai and is home to 1 million residents in an area of just 0.7 square miles. After a brief presentation on the challenging survey methodology for the area, the delegates were off to explore Dharavi, walking through the seemingly never-ending labyrinth of narrow lanes, hardly wide enough for two people to pass, with electricity wires hanging precariously overhead. The streets themselves are a hive of activity with children running and playing people chatting in informal meeting places food being prepared and sold and black smoke rising from potter's kilns there are also thriving cottage industries with an estimated 15000 single room factories in the district many centered on the business of recycling 
However, it was also apparent that Tharavi is not a slum in every sense. Whilst the buildings are certainly ramshackle, they are constructed of concrete and brick and seem permanent rather than the temporary huts one might expect. It may seem incredible, but the annual turnover of industry here is $650 million. Twelve people got a chance to visit Mumbai's indigenously designed skyscraper Kanchanjunga apartments in the plush residential locality of South Mumbai. From a distance, the Kanchanjunga apartment building, designed by Charles Correa, appears in the Mumbai sky like a carved monolithic stone. As we approached Kanchanjunga from the street level, it was impossible to ignore the alternating two-story voids which are a clear indication of its terrace gardens. Furthermore, the tour guide explained that in order to capture prevailing sea breezes, the orientation of these cheerful terrace gardens are towards east-west. The most exciting part of the Kanchanjunga tour was moving through different layers of volumetric space which later on released the delegates from the interior spaces into the double-height terrace garden. Once in the terrace garden, delegates were encompassed by the best views Mumbai has to offer while the brightly painted brick walls evoked a sense of happiness. The cultural tour of Mumbai gave the delegates a first impression of the sights and sounds of India. The delegates were taken on a drive around the tourist spots of the city while pointing to some of the important buildings historically and architecturally. The delegates visited the Gateway of India, Taj Mahal Hotel, Mumbai's principal landmarks, Kolaba Causeway, a busy street with cafes and street-side shopping, Trident Hotel, Marine Drive, which is fondly known as the Queen's Necklace, and Chopati. They also visited Mani Bhavan, where Mahatma Gandhi stayed during his visits to Mumbai. Dhobi Ghat, where Mumbai's dirties are scrubbed, bashed, dyed, and hung out to dry. They watched the local train passing close by, on which the city's commuters hang out like laundry, and also drove past Crawford Market, Victoria Terminus, and the flora fountain in the large bustling square in the heart of the city. The night before the conference, hundreds of people gathered on the lawns of the Renaissance Hotel and Convention Center for the VIP welcome reception. With the scene of Pawai Lake and surroundings in the background, delegates were welcomed by traditional live music performances and a buffet of Indian cuisine. The reception was kindly sponsored by the platinum sponsors of the conference, the Saifi Burhani Upliftment Trust and a representative from SBUT opened and welcomed the attendees. Professor Sangde Kim, for whom it was the first time to welcome the delegates at a conference as chairman of the CTBUH, wished all an educational and enjoyable three days ahead. Also, the conference dinner was held in the evening after the first day's proceedings and took place amidst the lovely ambience of the terraced gardens of the conference hotel. Delegates witnessed a wonderful evening of Indian cultural performances from the different states of India. A dance troupe performed varying dances and songs and ended by encouraging delegates to join them up on stage. The conference dinner was kindly hosted by the remaking of Mumbai Federation and ROMF chairman Lalit Gandhi and Secretary Mayang Gandhi briefly addressed the audience and thanked them for their attendance and support. The conference also benefited from the support of major sponsors at platinum, gold and silver levels. In addition, conference attendees had plenty of opportunities for both learning and business networking during the coffee and lunch breaks. With 27 exhibitors set up outside the main auditorium, some of the major companies involved in tall buildings in India and throughout the world were represented. Regional and international press both were present at the conference and the event got comprehensive coverage in all forms, print, television and the web. The feedback from the delegates and the press was overwhelming and everyone hoped for similar conferences to be planned in their city. Due to space constraints, we can only cover the plenary sessions and a few key presentations on this DVD. But full presentations of all the speakers can be viewed by visiting the conference website at ctbuh2010.ctbuh.org.